Hey guys, it's Lydia here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to turn an old 3D printer into a laser engraver. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back. So, just like I said, we're going to be turning an old 3D printer into a laser engraver. Now, if you're following any of my social medias, including my Instagram and my Twitter, you may know I have uh, transformed my TiVo Tornado into a laser engraver using a 500 milliwatt laser from Creality that they kindly sent to me to show you guys how to use. So, I want to teach you today how to do it and how easy it is. So, let me start by telling you what the first things I did. So, as you also may know, my TiVo Tornado has not been working for a couple years now. Um, it does not heat up correctly. The thermal um, thing on it doesn't read correctly. It, like, reads 270 degrees when it's off. And the extruder motor doesn't work. So, it's been sitting under my desk here for uh, years, and I just... Um, decided to finally do something with it. Again, Creality sent me their 500 milliwatt laser and um, it's actually pretty cool. It might not sound like a lot of watts, but it does the job and it's super easy to use. So it usually comes with magnets on the side of it so that you can just stick it on the side of your um, printer head. Now because the printer does not work and I'm not going to be using it for 3D printing, um, I actually took that off and I uh, designed and 3D printed on uh, one of my FDM printers a uh, holder for it. I will leave a link down below to my Thingiverse with that model on. It's pretty simple but um, I actually didn't have any screws for the actual laser so it's basically just taped on there but because the printer doesn't move a lot when it's actually um, engraving there's really no need for the screws but eventually I will upgrade two screws uh, but right now the tape is doing just fine. So there is a software that you will need, um, it is called Lightburn. Now you get a 30 day free trial of it and then if you like it then you can buy it for $40. Um, I believe that is a yearly thing like you just purchase it and then when it, once it runs out but I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm still using the 30 day trial but it is an awesome firmware so I'm definitely going to upgrade or purchase it once the software runs out of the 30 day trial. Um, so let me hop down to the printer and show you guys my setup and really how easy it is to set it up and install it onto your printer and then we'll hop to the computer and I'll show you guys the firmware. Alright, so as you guys can see here, this is the setup. It's super simple. Um, you really can't even see the bracket on uh, the printer head, but as you can see it is set up there and um, on the sides again it is taped and as you can see the smoking, I usually have a fan on right next to where the camera is right now, but because of sound quality, um, it is not on. Um, but this is super simple, and as you can see, it barely moves in the y-axis. Obviously, it does move in the y-axis because it prints out what it, or it engraves what it should be. Um, but because of the minimal uh, movement, I don't really need um, the mount to be super secure. But again, it's just on the um, x-axis here and it's actually connected inside the power box and it is connected to the fan um, port for the uh, fan for the coolant fan that would normally be on the 3D printer so um, I'm gonna give you guys just a little picture on the side over here of what the fan um, I'm talking about it's not the main fan here it's the fan that would normally be on the side and it just connects um, to the board that says fan on it. Now because my printer has the special cords that go in there, the cord actually um, pops out from the back here so it is not really secure. Um, this is basically just a rigged system that I set up but hopefully I will make it, make it a lot neater. And then um, also I have a Raspberry Pi connected to this 3D printer. One reason was because originally another reason why this 3D printer was not used was because the LCD screen down here didn't work. Um, but I eventually got it to work now. Um, I still use it to manually uh, set a homing spot which is right here um, for the print head. And I still use uh, Octoprint to print over through my computer which makes it super easy. All I have to do is put the wood on there with some uh, the double tape method which is just tape on the wood, tape on the bottom here and then just some super glue to hold it down. Now I used to just set it on there but because of the minimal vibration I thought it would work but I eventually did get some skipping um, and some 
of the engravings. So definitely make sure you hold down your print some way or another. That tape method is super easy and uh, actually really cheap to do. Alright, so um, sorry if the camera's a little shaky. I am using my hand to show you um, what this looks like. So this is the mount it is on. Again, super simple, just screwed in back there. So there's actually one of these holes um, right where it's screwed in at. Uh, and then there's a hole down here for the laser to go through and um, it is able to be twisted to be focused and um, as you guys can see here the, the engraving came out super nice super clear and just looks really really nice overall so I'm going to show you guys really quick how to basically set this up and then we can go to the software so again setting this up is super easy it is just mounted on here as you can see I can kind of move it and to turn it on you have to go to your for me, it's control, temperature, and all the way down to fan speed. And to make sure you are safe, make sure you wear your green glasses that come with this laser. Um, and you're going to turn your fan speed to 1. And now you can see here, um, it is on, obviously. Uh, now, because it is so low, it's not really burning this wood. And um, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but there's a tiny dot. And to change that, all you got to do is twist this knob up here. And I'm not going to untwist mine because it, again, is focused already and it is really nice and set up. Um, but super simple, again, just twist it. And um, once you can get the smallest dot you can, then you are focused. And again, um, also, you want to make sure your height is set correctly. Now, mine's set to, I believe, 100 millimeters, maybe a little bit more, maybe 110 or something. Um, I did change it because of the harder wood that I'm using. Um, but just play around with it, and it is super simple. Again, just make sure your laser is focused, and um, then you're good to go. What you guys are going to want to do is head over to this software called lightburnsoftware.com. Um, super simple. And then you want to go to download slash trial. Again, there's a 30-day trial that you can try before you buy as listed here. Um, and then it will be uh, $40. So I'm actually going to show you guys really quick uh, where you can find the prices. So right here it says find price. And then it goes here. Now this looks kind of weird, but... Um, this is the software that you click to buy it. So it's $40. I originally thought it was $30, but um, as you can see, this is the software. And um, to purchase the full license uh, key, it is $40. But we're going to download the um, trial today, which again is the full version, but it is for 30 days. So you choose right here um, which software you want to download. And I have a Mac OS, so I just will download that. And because I've used it already, this is... Um, what mine looks like so I'm just gonna set a new one and this is what yours should look like also um, one thing to um, mention here is to move around and stuff um, it's actually kinda difficult um, at least for my trackpad you only can zoom in and zoom out you can't move or, like drag or anything um, but starting off in the software it's super super easy um, as you can see over here are your cuts and layers so we're going to drag in something to um, engrave for example let's just say this QR code for my channel so I dra drug in a picture now you can drag in pictures um, and if your picture isn't great quality what you can do is double click um, and go down here to trace image and you can see here it is tracing all the black lines now I don't really need to do this because my picture is black and white and it is super clear it's not really pixelated but if you have a PNG or something you definitely want to do this to get the cleanest um, image out of your engraving so I'm just gonna press cancel here and now I'm going to scale this down now to scale something down and say example like this is a square and I need it to stay the correct size what you want to do is make sure that this button up here is lo or this uh, lock up here is locked so you have to be clicked on your um, picture or your words or whatever you're moving um, and make sure it's locked now if you want to say draw a rectangle like this um, I would have to unlock this and then scale it to the correct size so as you can see it's not a square it is a rectangle because the sides are not equal um, and the only way to change the sides to be different will be to unlock but once you come back over here you um, want to make sure that you relock it if you're going to move it again um, but we're just going to undo that and we're going to scale this down to let's say 25 millimeters and as you can see here it's scaled down again to move you really have to zoom in and zoom out 
Um, if anybody knows a specific way to move on here, please let me know because I haven't figured it out yet. Um, but zooming in, zooming out is not terrible. So one other thing you want to make sure when you are moving your design or getting ready to um, export it, uh, you want to make sure up here that you choose your position. So if you want it zero zero directly in the corner and you uh, are going to have your zero zero in the left corner, make sure it is left corner here. And then you can go over here to the left side and change it to zero and zero. Then it will put it directly in the corner um, just like you would on a CNC machine or like that would be your home ink for your 3D printer. Uh, now if you say you want a circle and you want it directly in the middle of a circle, you would put it in the middle and still do zero zero and then um, it would be directly in the middle so you'd have to start down here in the middle of your design and then it would start designing it uh, another thing to keep in mind here is your passes your pass count here and your speed now I have originally started off with hundred millimeters and um, I could not get my uh, results to turn out very nice so I change it all the way down to 20 millimeters per second and for some of the woods that I am engraving or etching whatever you want to call it um, I have to do two passes now for the harder kind of woods I do one pass and at 20 millimeters actually I normally do my net 13 or 18 I believe and it is um, super nice and I get a clean um, etching but really with this laser all you have to do is test it out um, the the software is super self-explanatory there's a lot of other uh, people out there who explain how to use it but that's just the general use on how to use it you can um, drag again like I showed you I drug this picture in here uh, you can also import pictures up here and you can use multiple types so as you can see this was an SVG so it drug it in looking like this for lines and also one thing to keep in mind if you wanted this to be solid color for example like this picture shows um, like it showed when before I opened it you have to make sure that up here so as you click this this is um, this layer and the image is this one because this was an image when we first brought it in so if I want this one to be filled in make sure it is selected to fill along with your picture uh, my image um, and the way to get your images to fill is you want to double click this and make sure you have uh, this set as threshold if it is just a black and white picture and um, then that should be good also um, again you don't have to image trace this one because it was already an SVG so if we go up here to preview you can see that it has created um, the image and what it will look like and the order it will go in. So if I um, go up here you want to make sure that each of your layers have the same amount of passes. If they need to be more passes, for example if this needed to be double pass, um, obviously this would be changed and um, make sure your speed is around the same amount again because once you know your specific speed you're going to want to stick with that but these will not stay the same unless you set them the same so now if we go back here you can see that it's only going to take uh, almost four hours um, less now because uh, it's only one pass so other than that that's super easy to use um, if you have any questions just shoot me down below in the comments uh, and I can try my best to answer them. Now to export your file, um, when you set it up, you set up the type you have and you can obviously change that down here, but mine is Marlin because again this is a 3D printer um, and obviously it's not going to be connected because it's again a 3D printer so it's a little bit different but then you go to save G code and you can name it whatever you want so I'll just do test and save it to my downloads and then save it. Now the thing about this is it does not save like a normal G-code was would. So when you see it here, it doesn't say G-code, it just says GC. And the way for your printer to read that is you actually have to go in and edit the name and finish it, say G-code, and then use G-code instead of .gc. And now, um, because I actually have one named that already, we'll just do test one and change it to G-code. There we go. So now it looks like a normal 3D printed part um, would after it was sliced. So all you got to do now is bring this to 
where either your uh, SD card or for me because I'm using um, Octoprint I'm just going to drag it in here and just like that super easy now one thing to make sure um, about this is that your, your position is set correctly so if you really want it in the corner make sure you have it in the corner there um, if your homings are different on your printers change that change your settings to what your homing is and then just make sure every time you start your print it is set to zero zero and to the correct distance alright guys so that is it I hope you understood everything that I talked about in this video again if you have any questions please let me know down below in the comments I would love to answer them and to teach you guys more about this more in depth if you really would like to know um, I've had a lot of fun with this laser as you could tell I've been making um, some custom parts for some people and just something new in this workshop is just really awesome and um, something new to me because I've never done laser engraving before or burning um, on wood and I'm actually going to be starting on leather so that'll be something new and hopefully I will be sharing that with you guys on here and again on my social medias my Instagram and my Twitter I'm always posting on for you guys so don't forget to check those out down below in the description um, again, uh, thank you to Creality for sending me your awesome laser. It is super cool. And again, if you guys have any questions about that laser specifically, please let me know. I've been working with it for a couple weeks now. Um, it is just a really awesome uh, laser. And also, I will have a link to that specific laser down below in the description with everything else you need to know about it. And also a link for Lightburn. Again, this software is really awesome and super, super easy to use. And there's a bunch of videos on YouTube from the company Lightburn about their software. So if you want to watch those, that's actually how I learned how to use it. So they're super useful. And the software, again, is overall super easy and gives very, very nice um, turnouts with your laser, no matter basically what laser you have. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, please definitely consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to like the video. Um, each like helps me grow the channel. And turn on that bell notification because it gets my channel noticed by more people. Uh, and thank you again for 4,000 subscribers on the channel. To everybody, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.